Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome everyone to this live session on DDoS attack. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Now, let's get started. Let's start off with a few interesting facts about DDoS attacks. Cybercrime magazine stated that the total number of DDoS attacks globally are anticipated to double to 14.5 million by 2022. Now that's a huge number, isn't it? Also, given the current situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, every sector is operating virtually. Thus, the attacks are growing more significantly than normally. Do you know the financial brunt a DDoS attack causes? Once again, according to Cybercrime magazine, a denial of service or a DDoS attack could cost up to $120,000 for a small company or more than $2 million for a larger one. With financial loss, even reputation gets hampered. There are a few industries that are more susceptible to DDoS attacks, and according to the Cisco reports, the online gaming and the gambling industry are a prime target. Now, let me talk about a few real-life DDoS attacks that have happened in the past. Our first example is the DDoS attack faced by Dyne. Dyne is an internet performance management and web application security company that was acquired by Oracle in 2016. On October 21, 2016, Dyne faced a serious distributed denial-of-service attacks that targeted systems operated by DNS provider Dyne. The DDoS attack lasted roughly for a day, with spikes coming and going up to 1.5 terabits per second. Reports state that attack was carried out using a weapon called the Mirai botnet. About 10% to 20% of all the 500,000 or so known Mirai bots were involved, in addition to other devices. The findings reveal that Mirai was the primary source of malicious attack traffic. The attack affected a large number of users in North America and Europe. Several large businesses with high traffic like Amazon, Quora, Airbnb, HBO, The New York Times, Twitter, Visa and CNN were affected. Our next example is Amazon Web Services, a subsidiary of Amazon which works on providing on-demand cloud computing platforms. In the month of February 2020, Amazon stated that AW Shield observed and mitigated a 2.3 terabits per second DDoS attack. AW Shield, a managed DDoS protection service that is responsible for safeguarding applications running on AWS, mitigated this attack. The attack was carried out using hijacked CLDAP web servers and caused three days of elevated threat for its AW Shield staff. The DDoS attack had a peak volume traffic of 2.3 terabits per second, which is the largest ever recorded. Detailing the attack in its Q1 2020 threat report, Amazon said its AWS Shield service mitigated the largest DDoS attack ever recorded, stopping a 2.3 terabits per second attack in mid-February this year. Now that we have seen a few real-life DDoS attacks, let's move on to understanding what exactly a DDoS attack is. You might have often come across the word denial of service attack, right? So is it the same as DDoS? Well, they differ with respect to a few parameters. A denial of service attack takes place when a computer is used to flood the target server or network with traffic. By doing so, its resources and bandwidth are exhausted. The motive of the attack is to deny normal legitimate service requests and user access. As you can see in this image, we have the attacker's computer sending traffic to the target server here. Now, let's speak a bit about the DDoS attack. A DDoS attack works closely like a denial-of-service attack. The only difference is that here, multiple systems are used to launch the attack. You can call DDoS attack as a large-scale attack operation based on a denial-of-service attack. DDoS stands for Distributed Denial-of-Service. Here, several systems target a single system with malicious traffic. When multiple systems are used, the attacker can put the system offline more easily. DDoS attack is faster than a normal denial-of-service attack, and DDoS attacks are difficult to trace. From this image, you can see that multiple systems are used to launch this attack. The systems together flood the target system with massive traffic. 
Now that we know what a DDoS attack is, let's try and understand the motive behind these attacks. The first reason can be guessed well by all of you, and that is for ransom. Just like any other cyber attack, the primary reason is monetary gain. A website owner can be asked to pay a ransom for attackers to stop a DDoS attack. The ransom prices to stop the DDoS attacks vary from small amounts to hefty amounts of money. In most cases, the ransom is usually charged in bitcoins. The second reason is hacktivism or protest. Hacktivism occurs with the intention of spreading a message. The aim of this is to usually protest against an ideology of a political agenda. The target of many hacktivism DDoS attacks are government, financial or business websites. Attackers launch DDoS attacks to shut a website, say, for a political reason, thus trying to make a statement. A person with a financial or an ideological motive is capable to damage an organization by launching a DDoS attack against it. Lastly, these attacks can be carried out for a specific reason, called targeted attacks. For example, it can be done to damage an organization's reputation. It is to be noted that DDoS attacks can be deployed against big or small sites and can be driven by either competition or pure boredom, or also for the need for the challenge. The magnitude of these attacks can vary from small to big. Let's now move on and understand a little more about the working of a DDoS attack. An attacker is required to gain control of a network of online machines in order to carry out a DDoS attack. Computers and various other IoT devices are infected with malware and these turn into a bot, also known as a zombie. A group of such bots is called a botnet. Once a botnet is created, the attacker takes over the remote control access. A DDoS is usually launched through a network of remotely controlled bots or hacked computers. Botnets can range from hundreds to thousands of computers controlled by hackers. It is possible that your computer could be a part of a botnet without even you knowing it. The next step is to target the IP address of the victim by the botnet. Once this is done, each bot will bombard the target with fake service requests. The botnets send more connection requests than a server can handle. In some cases, they send huge volumes of data that exceed the bandwidth range of the victim. By doing so, the targeted server or network will overflow and thus resulting in a denial of service to normal traffic. It is not possible to identify the bot as it looks like a legitimate internet device. A successful DDoS attack slows a website, prevents users from accessing it, resulting in financial losses and performance issues. So now that you know how a DDoS attack is carried out, let's have a look at the types of DDoS attacks. Different DDoS attack vectors target the different components of a network connection. DDoS attacks can be divided into three types. They are volume-based attacks, protocol attacks, and application layer attacks. Let's have a look at each one of these attacks. First up, we have the volume-based DDoS attack. As the name suggests, this attack depends on the volume of the inbound traffic to the target. This attack aims at overloading the website's bandwidth or causes usage issues. It creates a congestion by consuming all the available bandwidth. Here, massive volumes of data are sent to the victim by using a form of an application or request from a botnet. It is very simple. The more the volume, the higher the success rate of the attack. The volume-based DDoS attacks include UDP floods, ping, that is ICMP floods, and other spoofed packet floods. Now let's have a look at an example of the volume-based attack, that is the ping ICMP flood attack. The Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP, which is utilized in a ping flood attack is an internet layer protocol used by network devices to communicate. An ICMP flood attack, also known as ping flood attack, is one of the most common denial-of-service attacks. Here the attacker overwhelms the target device with ICMP eco requests. Basically, ICMP eco request and eco reply messages are used to ping a network device to check the connection between the sender and the receiver. An ICMP request requires resources and bandwidth to process and reply to the requests. By flooding the target with request packets, the network is forced to respond with an equal number of reply packets, thus making it unserviceable to normal traffic. 
Attackers would usually spoof in a bogus IP address in order to mask the sending device. The next type of DDoS attack we will be discussing about is the protocol-based attack. When you learn networking, you will know that the internet is based totally on a set of protocols. Protocol attacks cause a service disruption by consuming intermediate communication equipment like firewalls and load balancers. DDoS attacks based on protocols exploit weaknesses in layer 3 and layer 4 protocol stacks. Protocol-based attacks exploit your network by sending either more packets than what your server can manage or more bandwidth than what your network ports can hold. This attack includes SIN floods, ping of death and smurf DDoS to name a few. Here we will have a look at an example of the protocol-based attack that is the SIN flood attack. Here, the attack exploits the TCP handshake. In a regular TCP IP network transaction, there is a three-way handshake, namely the SYN, the acknowledgement, and the SYN acknowledgement. The SYN is a service request. The act that is also known as the acknowledgement is a response from the target. And the SYN acknowledgement is the original requester replying with something like a thanks in return. Whereas in the SYN flood attack, the SYN packets are created with fake IP addresses by the attackers. The target, as per the protocol, then sends an acknowledgement to the dummy address. Unfortunately, this dummy address never responds. This is carried out a number of times. The target waits for the final step in the handshake and in turn, it exhausts its resources in the process. Next up, we have the application layer attack. The main motive of this attack is to bring down an online service or a website. These attacks are comparatively smaller but silent. Application layer attacks are also known as layer 7 attacks. And it not only targets the application but also the network and its bandwidth. Application layer attacks include GET and POST floods, low and slow attacks and more. Let's have a look at the famous HTTP flood attack as an example. HTTP flood is a type of distributed denial of service attack in which the attacker exploits legitimate looking HTTP GET or POST requests to attack a web server or an application. Here, large numbers of HTTP requests flood the server resulting in denial of service. HTTP has generally two types of requests, GET or POST. A GET request is used to retrieve information while a POST request is often used when submitting a completed web form or when uploading a file. Usually, HTTP flood attacks are harder to detect and block. A HTTP flood attack sends what appears to be legitimate HTTP GET or POST requests to attack a web server or an application. These flooding attacks often rely on a botnet. Now that we had a look at the types of DDoS attacks, Let's understand the measures we need to take up in order to prevent these attacks. The first step is to acquire more bandwidth. You must make sure that you have ample bandwidth to handle any spikes in traffic caused due to malicious activity. Currently, with attackers being more careful, having more bandwidth raises the bar which the attackers have to overcome before launching a successful DDoS attack. This is a good preventive step. Next, make sure to develop a DDoS response plan ready. Usually, when a DDoS attack takes place, there is very less time to plan. Hence, it is wise to define a plan in advance as it will avoid and minimize any impacts. To do this job, first you would have to develop an incident response plan. Also, make sure your data center is prepared and your team knows what to do. The standard key elements include system checklist, forming a response team, which should include the list of internal and external contacts as well. And the last being securing your network infrastructure. This can be done with the help of IPS, that is intrusion prevention systems, which combine firewalls, VPN, load balancing, and other layers of DDoS defense techniques. Our third point is to configure network hardware against an attack. At times, small hardware configuration changes can help you prevent a DDoS attack. This is most often overlooked. Also, make sure to protect your DNS servers as attackers can bring down your website and web servers offline by attacking your DNS servers. Next point is to leverage the cloud. The conventional DDoS mitigation solutions oversize the network bandwidth and require complex hardware, which proves to be costly and also ineffective, whereas cloud has greater bandwidth and resources. 
Cloud-based apps can absorb malicious traffic way before it reaches its intended destination. Therefore, it is good to outsource DDoS prevention to cloud-based service providers. Our fifth point involves monitoring your website traffic regularly for unusual activities. It is a great thing if your website gets millions of new visitors in an hour, but isn't that also suspicious? A sudden increase in traffic is an alarming situation. Hence, have alerts set up in the event you exceed a threshold specific to the number of requests targeting your site. Considering the time and place of the inbound traffic is also a good step. A DDoS attack usually gives a few red flags before it happens. Your team should be wise enough to spot them beforehand. The signs of such an attack, for example, will be your website being unresponsive or responding slowly, intermittent website shutdowns or probably the user having problems accessing the website. If these issues are prolonged, then the network is likely experiencing a DDoS and an action should be taken immediately. The next step is to keep everything up to date. This might sound basic, but it goes a long way. All the systems should be kept up to date to make sure that any issues or bugs are fixed. It is always good to detect threats at an early stage. Finally, you can make use of DDoS prevention tools like Inferva, Cloudfare, F5 Networks, Arbor DDoS, and Black Lotus to name a few. These tools are very effective. For example, Cloudfare's Layer 3 and 4 protection absorbs an attack before it reaches the target server. This is not achievable by using firewalls, load balancers, and routers. Taking an example of Arbor DDoS, it is to be noted that it can deal with large volumes of malicious traffic without disrupting the regular traffic. This software is used to mostly protect enterprise or web hosting services. Now let's have a look at something interesting. We will speak a bit about the digital attack map. As you see on your screens, it is a data visualization of DDoS attacks across the world. It is built through a collaboration between Google Ideas and Arbor Networks. You can have a look at it and explore the various features it has, like which part of the world and when a DDoS attack is happening. You can also get all the stats related to the attack. Digital Attack Map lets you learn about past trends and find reports of outages happening on a given day. Make sure to check this out. With that, we have reached the end of this video on what is a DDoS attack. Do you think we missed anything important? Let us know in the live chat or in the comment section below if you're watching later. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there! If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.